up with butter and take me to the freaking bow. Oh, that's where we are. We're right here live and on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Friday night, September 25th, 2020. How the hell are y'all doing out there? Yep, yep, summer's over. And we're here. We're still here. Um, <laughs> Moose Girl will be along in a little bit. She's uh, watching some of uh, those guys slap a puck around on a big ice cube. So uh, she'll, she'll come in after that. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the show. This is the Figures Ball, and we are live on com, as I stated. Also, uh, rlmradio.xyz for the audio stream. Hey, you, know, you can pick up the audio stream other places, but that's the primary, rlmradio.xyz. And another spot for the video stream there is vaughn.live slash Media. And, uh, yeah, we've been using them for a while now, and uh, I like them. They're not perfect. Well, you got to drop out occasionally, but yeah, it's all right, man. They're, they're, they're good, they're free, and uh, they treat us well over there. So, hooray for Vaughn. Dot live. Uh, anyway, so how are you all doing out there? Uh, now into the fall season, although it was 90-something here today. Um, so, not really summer yet, although we did have a couple days of winter a couple weeks ago. Uh, it, so it's still, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a- anyway, so, um, uh, wherever you're at out there listening in, whatever part of the world, uh, part of the U S of a part of Europe or Scandinavia, Scandinavia, they're part of Europe. I know, but they may not consider themselves to be, I, I've heard rumor that some Scandinavians don't really want to be associated with with the rest of Europe, and I can't really blame them, but that's me and my way of looking at things. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, how do you all the folks here in the chat? I see a whole bunch of folks in here chatting tonight, and uh, what do we got? Hansel, a.k.a. J. Dread, the Miss Moose Girl, the Mighty Moose Girl, she'll be around, she'll be around. Kate uh, is hanging out here and chatting it up with us. I saw I saw Rome's and, and uh, Chloe. E, uh, Miss Donna Dam Van Mita, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, Dan Kenny C did pop in earlier, and uh, who else we got up here? Mister Meister Brow, he's around hanging out. Uh, I think Java Doctor's out there. Gramsy, oh yeah, Gramsy, how are you? Um, <laughs> anyway, there's a whole bunch more people in the chat, uh, or in the chat, Nicholas that are not actively chatting. Java Doctor, I think I mentioned him already. The Beetle! The Mighty Beetle, he's probably asleep by now. Uh, so all kinds of folks, uh, come on over, jump into the chat. You can get to the chat on RealLibertyMedia.com. Now there's some buttons that are right up there on the top right corner. One of them says pop-up chat, and you can just click that and then give it a nickname and hop on in here to the chat and be part of the show. It's always great when people do. I always appreciate that. Um... What else am I thinking? What else am I thinking? Oh, you can also get to the chat on rlmradio.xyz. Um, I think, uh, let me see here. We got to take a quick look. I, I don't always look. Oh, yeah, right up on the top on the menu there, it says chat. You just click that, and it'll take you down to the uh, the chat applet there, which is a, a web-based thing. Uh, if you have your own, you know, built-in or uh, installed application on whatever device, you may be using, and there is IRC applications for pretty much every platform that I've come across. Um, you can do that. Go uh, hook on up to uh, irc.freenode.net, and then once you connect up, jump in to Pound Pound Real Liberty Media, and you'll be here with the folks. So, anyway, let me see if anything interesting going on on Real Liberty Media this week. I'm thinking of RLM news, anything specific to any broadcasts or Otherwise, it's been a pretty quiet week. It's been a pretty quiet week. I, I, I think um, nothing really uh, interesting to report uh, as far as troubles or good things on, on RLM. Um, there, there was a, uh, one odd thing. Well, not an odd thing, but uh, interesting to me. Um, earlier this week, I got this email off of the Twitter there. Uh, and, and I had been invited to this uh, group uh, on uh, 
kind of a chat group, I guess, over there on the Twitter, which I've no nobody's ever invited me to one of those before. At least not people I don't know, so I am now a member of Ancapistan. Yeah, for those of you unfamiliar with what that is, Ancap, which is anarcho capitalist, that would be me. I'm an anarcho capitalist. Uh much in the vein of the good old Murray Rothbard. Yeah. <laughs> You could downright call me a Rothbardian and be accurate. All right, all right. Um, I think that'll do for now. I think that's good. Um, and we'll, we'll just launch into a, a musical set here to get things rolling. And uh, by the time I'm done with that, it's possible, possible, uh, that Moose Girl will be done with what she's doing. Let's see, Hansel here is posting some stats for me in the chat. Let's see, COVID-19 in New Mexico. And I, 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 don't, I don't call it COVID. I still call it Corona. I don't, I don't know why that got pushed off. Anyway, uh, let's see, positive tests, 28,047. Negative tests, 865,000. Well, that's a, that seems like a reasonable ratio, I guess. Reported recoveries, 16,000. Reported deaths, 865. Uh, is that like since day one? I don't know the time frame on any of that. But, uh, okay. Um, I don't know anybody that's died from corona. I'm not even sure I know anybody that actually had corona. I know people that say they've known people that had corona. But I don't think anybody that I personally know um, has has had corona. Um, some people in, in the chat, like uh, Moose Girl said her uh, one of her sons, said he tested positive for it. But then again, the tests are worthless, so I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> he tested positive. Well, whatever the test tested for came up positive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, enough. Let, 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 let's do some music here for y'all. Let's kick it off with some jams. Y'all want some jams? I, I'm not seeing anything in the chat, but... I, I'm hearing a distinct yes echoing inside my brain. That could just be me talking to myself, which is something I do on a fairly regular basis. <laughs> All right, folks, this is Joe Bonamassa. Electric Eye, Jesus Priest. Oh, it's off of the Epitaph DVD. Oh, man, that, that, they, they, that's a great DVD. I've been listening to a bunch of songs off of that. And, man, I tell you, oh, another thing I'll tell you, too. Um, I, I think somehow YouTube and Amazon must talk. <laughs> Communicate what I watch over there. Uh, because I, I keep getting these things from Amazon, uh, you know, about, about this Epitaph DVD set. Oh, you've been watching a lot of this. Well, they don't say that, but they. But uh, anyway, anyway, before that, <laughs> we had uh, Molly Tuttle featuring the old Crow Medicine Show, uh, doing "Helpless." Yeah, you know the good old song "Helpless," uh, and and it, it's for a good a good uh, cause there, the whyhunger dot org. Uh, so you might want to go to whyhunger dot org and look that up if you want to help some people that really need help out there. Um, because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a human thing to do. I mean, if you, if you've got the ability to help in any way, uh, whyhunger.org. Yes, Neil Young. Uh, um, I thought, I thought it might've been CSNY, but maybe it was just Neil Young. All right. Uh, anyway, so, uh, we, we kicked it off there with Joe Bonamassa, uh, doing Gary Moore's I'll play the blues for you live at the Greek theater. So uh, that, was, that was a good set, good music, man. Um, let's see here. Okay, so it was just Neil. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and uh, Young. All right, all right, cool. Um. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so anyway, so I guess, I guess the uh, hockey things are where we might we, 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 we might get the moose girl. As soon as I say that, as soon as I say that, I hear a ringy ding ding in my ear, and and we have on the line with us now. Hello. The mighty moose girl. 
Hang on, I gotta change the setting real quick. All right. So All right. How's it going? It's going good. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. Made it through another week, um, which is always good. That, that is always good. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit uh, delayed tonight. Yeah, well, you know, you got your... Uh... Watching hockey, man. I mean, you know. Yeah. Important things to do, you know. The puck does not stop here. Well, it's the final games, you know. It's the, it's the battle for the Stanley Cup, so it's like there's there's only going to be so much more hockey played here, you know. Now, now, how I much? Get it all I can. How much of how much of a season did they actually have? They had a very shortened season. They 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 actually went by the the standings as they were, because the season had just started. Oh. So they went by the standings as they were, and those are the teams that. Like the the teams that had the best records got into the playoffs in this bubble in Canada where they played some of the games in Toronto and some of the games in Edmonton. I see. And so, and they've all been kept socially distanced and no contact with like the outside world per se. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so now the two final teams left are Tampa Bay Lightning and Dallas Stars. Okay, and that so, was that... And I, that's who I wanted in the series, the final, because those are like the two best teams in the NHL right now. Okay. This year. Okay. So, I mean, um, one reason I've been rooting for Dallas is because they have some really standout young players. Well, one of the young players, he's their third string goalie. All he's right. from Lakeville. He's twenty one. And he is their third string goalie, and he had to play the other night because their backup goalie is hurt. So twenty one years, and then they have this kid from Finland on um, defense called Miro Heskinen. Yeah. Heskinen, and he's from Finland. He's really fucking good, and um, he's like a rookie. And then they have a guy from Wisconsin on the team. Oh, Joe head. Pavelski. So I had to kind of like go with my homies, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I did that. I decided to root for the stars, and it makes for kind of a good rivalry between me and Kate. But it's a friendly rival rivalry because my regular team is the Minnesota Wild, but they usually suck. So I usually pick another team besides the Wild that I like. Uh-huh. So I can root for that team. You know what I mean? Wait, are, are, are you telling me Wisconsin does not have a hockey team? No, they do not. Not a pro team. Wow. How could a... That, I don't know. That seems okay, weird. Okay, so part of the problem, Grim, is, is because of where the location and the market. Because you got the wild. It used to be the Minnesota North Stars in St. Paul, right? All right. Or Minnesota, Minneapolis. Okay. And, well, then, when the... The North Stars disbanded like in ninety something, ninety eight, or maybe it was earlier than that. They moved the team down to Dallas and renamed them the Dallas Stars. Okay, but so then you have the Chicago Blackhawks, right? Yeah. And they're in Chicago, and Chicago is literally like I think ten hours from Minneapolis. Right. So. The theory or the the reasoning behind Wisconsin not having a pro team is because of its proximity to both of those markets, Minneapolis and Chicago, which is dumb because it, it, the NH or the Packers they are there, you know they're a Green Bay, you know what I mean? They could have a team based out of Green Bay or out of Madison, a hockey team. I would think it would be it would take off. I mean, I, I've heard there's been talk of having. A pro hockey team here, but it just hasn't come about. But it would be cool. Oh, okay, cool. But we we produce this state produces a lot of hockey players. I mean, it's Minnesota is they call themselves the state of hockey, which makes a lot of sense sense because like the Hockey Hall of Fame is there. A bunch of famous players have come out of Minnesota, um, and it just makes sense that it's there. But Wisconsin produces a lot of good hockey players too. So, like, the, the Pavelski that's playing for the Dallas Stars right now, Joe Pavelski, he's from um, Plover. He went to Stevens Point for high school. They went to the state tournament in 2002 and won it. So, he's – I had to go with my Wisconsin boy. He played for the Badgers. Okay. You know? Well, I, I 
not having a uh, dog in the fight, shall we you say? One more win. I mean, Dallas really <laughs> – they they pretty much had to win tonight, which they did not. It, they took it to overtime. Yeah. But um, so now they're down three to one. Okay. Well, so well they uh, as tomorrow, I was saying, they uh, win it. What? As I was saying, I not having a dog in the fight at all. Right. And not really being a hockey fan, mm-hmm. um, will say that I am rooting for the the bolts. <laughs> Okay. Instead of Dallas. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, it's, okay. you know, it's Kate's team they're down there. Right. Uh, right. I mean, I uh, love uh, the Bolts. Don't get me wrong. That, that, I love uh, their goalie. I love a lot of their players. And it was really hard for me to decide who to root for. Right, right. You know? well, <laughs> absolutely. And anyway, so that and then also being an ex-Charger fan, uh, they, well, they, yeah, there you go. they used to be referred to. As the Bolts, they may still be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think maybe in swinging they are probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, whichever. Um, so, um, <laughs> so if uh, I, I can go, yay! If they win, not that I'm going to watch the game, um, but <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yay, Kate! Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yay, Tampa Bay! Uh, oh, and uh, by the way, a side note: um, helpless. According to Wikipedia, Mm -hmm. Helpless is a song written by Neil Young, but Mm -hmm. recorded by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young on their their 1970 album, Deja Vu. Oh, okay. Well, I've heard it both ways. I've heard it done by the, the, you know, CSNY, and I've heard it also done by Neil Young solo, so... Well, apparently... I I apparently knew that he wrote it. uh, But apparently, it was also originally recorded... With uh, oh. Neil Neil's uh, band Crazy Horse in oh, early okay. 1969, so that was before Crosby, Stills, and Nash, you know, came together. So, right, right. Well, before Young was with them. Yeah, probably. I think. Right. Anyway, that's what it says. So it's I, hard to remember, Graham. I mean, I was three years old, so I don't you know. I know. I know. <laughs> 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 Yes. I know a little bit about the history of it and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Anyway, just uh, but, just uh, you know, verifying whatever. Uh, yeah. So, there it is. Oh my God. So that's great. So uh, anything good or new or different or? Uh, no, not really. Um, not really. Not locally, really. Uh, I think there's going to be something going on tomorrow. Big time in a lot of major cities. Um, right. I've heard that. I've heard this is going to happen. And tomorrow should be a very interesting day. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know how to go with this one, but sorry about that. Um, because, okay. Okay. So they're making a big deal out of this this um, nomination for the Supreme Court, right? Right. Right. And the Democrats are saying, no, he can't do that. He should wait till after the election. Well, Obama didn't have to wait or whatever. You know, I mean, if you look back in history, this isn't the first time that this, some, this situation has happened, okay? Of course not. So why – the rule states, as far as I can, can tell, that Donald Trump has every right to – Pick a Supreme Court justice at this point. He is the president. I think it's not a, so, just his right, but his duty to do yeah, so. Yeah, because he needs to fill that seat. I, I think that's I think that's written into one of his one of his job descriptions. Probably so, that is the job of the president to do uh, that. Either way, all either the way, Democrats are all up in arms about it, saying this, that, and they're trying to like scramble to say how can we we stop this from happening? Well, you can't. It, no, you can't. can't stop it from happening. No, and, I mean, and either you way, you can go out tomorrow and fucking raise holy fucking hell if you want. I, I mean, they can they, 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 change anything. They, they can they can go ahead and say that uh, the Senate never confirmed or even took a hearing on Obama's nominee, but Obama did nominate somebody, and yeah, he did. And uh, and it just you know that's as far as it got, cause, right? Because the Republicans had the Senate. Yeah. And they still do. 
<laughs> so, uh, right. yeah. So whatever, you know. Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, know. I, I don't mean, really give a crap one way or the other well, what they do with that. Well, we talked about last week, Grim. The Supreme Court gives you an opinion. Gives an opinion. Right. They just give an opinion. That just is your. They opinion. don't decide anything. No. They are not the final say. They're just like a freaking consultant or something. You know what I mean? Well, I don't you know, know, how to, you uh, know. They, they 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 issue their their opinion on whatever right. case is brought to them. Uh, yeah. and, and and then it's pretty much taken as law at that point. Right, in time. because they're justices or they're judges or whatever. The highest court in the land, as they say. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I, whatever. I, I, you know, the, the whole it's still going to be a messed up situation. Yeah, um, it's good. You know, at this point, you know, and this is a political year. Highly political, And it's yeah. always crazy in a political year. You know, it's just always election year. You know what I mean? Yeah, And that's yeah. what I meant, election year. Um, and so, but this has really been going on for four years. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, know? absolutely. I mean, this has been going on. So, um, I just, I understand being pissed off, okay? I really do. I've been pissed off in my life before. You know, it happens. You get it pissed happens. off for whatever reason. You know, you get pissed <laughs> off for a lot of different reasons. People get pissed off, you know? Right, right. Um, but to be so pissed off to the point that you're fucking going up to people while they're trying to have their dinner and sitting down at their fucking table and getting right in their face with your fucking message, that's bullshit, okay? That's messed up. And you're not gonna. You're you're making yourself and your cause look totally terrible. You're making you guys look unhinged. Whatever your cause is, it's not working to the people that are just sitting back and watching it. Okay. Yeah. It's not working. The burning, the looting, all that fucking bullshit. That it's not. It's backfiring on you people, big time. Yeah, well, they don't see it. That's though. from what I see, okay? Because I'm not doing any of it. I'm just, I'm just watching this all unfold. This whole year has been that pretty much, you right, know. Right. Um, we've been watching this happen online on YouTube, you know, on Twitter. Yeah, all over the place. Um, it's election year, and like you said in the chat the other day, this is like 1972 on steroids. Which was 1972? Wasn't a presidential election, was it? 71. Oh, seventy-one. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, so right after the election. Well, okay. you know, it's, all, it's always it Ford, right? Was it Ford? Oh, I mean, it was, no, it was seventy-two. It was seventy-two. Was the election year? I, okay, I, okay. I, 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 I tried I, to look it up the other day. Yeah. No, no, it was Nixon. That was Nixon. Oh, it was Nixon. Okay, well, so no wonder. Okay, no wonder it was all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was young. I was five or something. I couldn't. I didn't. Re, I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember being in, in elementary school in kindergarten but, or something, and I remember my parents watching TV, the news every night, and on their black and white TV. And you may not remember, you know, you may not remember it, but I mean, you know about it. You know about Watergate, obviously. Oh yeah, I know. You, you all know, about you, it. you know about Nixon resigning. Um, yeah. Uh, with his, I am not a crook, and you won't have you won't have Dick Nixon to kick around anymore. <laughs> right, right. I mean, but yeah, it was um, just—it was a crazy year. Oh, absolutely, and, and you know um, there was you know, all, all kinds of weird from from I'd say, uh, well, '68 when when Nixon was initially put in office uh, through the. I mean, he had a rough time too. Uh, not as bad, yeah. not as bad well, as Trump. Well, Vietnam had just Vietnam ended in '71 or '72, right? Was that maybe seventy three. I I don't know exactly. Uh, it, it was okay. right, it was right in that era. Uh, I don't think the boys started coming home until at least seventy three. Um, okay. And then you know seventy four, they were kind of closing it out over there. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, oh, but there was a lot God. of stuff. You know, the the late sixties through the early seventies. There that that whole era, right. that whole period. Uh, Leading it, up to that, yeah, and then on September eighth of seventy two, President Gerald Ford uh, issued a pardon, an unconditional pardon of former President Nixon, right. immunizing him from pr prosecution for any crimes he had committed or may have committed or taken part in, quote unquote, 
as president. So he mm-hmm. got a huge pardon. I mean, he didn't he didn't actually commit the Watergate break in and the taping. Uh, no, he had, but he, had, he knew all of it. He had, no, he had people do it for him. <laughs> so he didn't actually. Oh, even worse, yeah. So he was totally culpable. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was a crook. and, and <laughs> Right, Donna, exactly. Uh, so uh, and, and, anyway. Yeah, so, so Nixon resigned, resigned in August 8th, 74. And September 8th of 74 is when the, the pardon was issued. Sure. So he, Ford was sworn in on August 9th. And, and you know, time. As, soon, as soon as whatever right. guy, whatever guy they hate is out of office, they, they quit going after him anyway, so. Right, yeah. Let's yeah. see what else happened that year here. Let's see here. The cost of living in 1972. Let's just, just look at it was things. cheap. It was, every, every, everything was really what? cheap back then. Um, right. Okay. So the yearly inflation rate was three point two seven in the USA. Okay. Um, the year end close of the Dow Jones Industrial Average was ten twenty thousand a thousand twenty. The average cost of a new house was twenty seven thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. The there average is. income per year was eleven thousand eight hundred. The average monthly rent was $165. The cost of a gallon of gas was $0.55. Cents. Uh-huh. A lady's swimsuit was 30 A Kodak camera was 28 Wrangler jeans were 12 Average uh, house price was $7,374 for a home. Oh, a cost of a new house was 27550 but the average home price was 7374 Okay. A gallon of petrol was thirty-five cents. A Ford Pinto was two thousand seventy-eight dollars. And that was too much. <laughs> a Barbie doll was two dollars and eighty-five cents. A frizzy was ninety-four cents. Ladies' stylish over-the-knee boot were twenty-three dollars. A front slit dress was eighteen dollars. A cook center, which I don't know what that is, a classic cook center, <clears throat> was. Four hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay, well, I don't know, but I, I think I think to me personally, uh, those those two female garments you mentioned, those I, I, they should come back into style. <laughs> well, they are; they're in style. Uh, fr- still front sli- go away. Front... Lady swimsuit did not go away. No, no, no. The front slit dress and the over, over oh, the, the front slit. No, they still have them. And then, and then, in the knee high boots. The over the knee boot. Oh yeah. Yeah. They are oh, still... yeah. Yeah, yeah. they are still a thing. Dude. Yeah, they're more so good. Those are worry. good. Those are good things. Um, uh, okay, so let's see what else here. Um, a dinette set was like two hundred eighty-three dollars. Helen yeah, mayonnaise that's... was a dollar thirty-nine. Strawberries a pound were thirty-one cents. Ground beef a pound was ninety-eight cents. Fruit cocktail can was twenty cents. Fruit cocktail and can. A split, yeah, a split-level home on a hilltop. Living room, dining room, three bedrooms, cathedral ceilings, three baths, central air, and double garage in Iowa City in 1972 was $32,400. Oh, fancy. Yeah. I mean, think of the home prices today, though. <laughs> How no, much do you think that house is today? <laughs> I don't know, but I know I know that uh, uh, my, my parents moved, um, bought a house in 72. Um, uh-huh. Oh, okay. It was, it was a good... So I might might have been five bedroom. Um mm-hmm. we had four kids there, so uh anyway. Um Right. <laughs> so uh but it was twenty grand I think in San Diego. 20, 20 grand for a five bedroom house in San Diego. And wow. A, and a what night, would that be today, do you think, Grim? And a nice suburban area. Oh, it's about seven hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> So, so How did Cal- we get to this point? <laughs> well, well, it, you th- what that thing probably doesn't mention is that in 1971, Richard Nixon mm-hmm. cut cut off the gold and the silver standard. Boom. Um, and after right, that, that's true. A, that could happen. A, well, right after here. that, you could, you could you could just watch the parabolic rise of the inflation and uh, the the devaluation of the dollar from that point. Um, I mean, right. it was it was already on a trend and upward 
or downward trend, depending on how you look at it. Um, <laughs> it was already on an upward trend since 1913, but uh, but once the, once right, that right. once once that happened, it 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 went through the freaking roof. Um, so uh, I mean, it, it was it was yeah. Uh, yeah, so there you go. There is so you can look back at different years in this site that I just posted. Yeah, but the reason I picked uh, seventy two is because you had mentioned it and said like two thousand and twenty is like nineteen seventy two on steroids. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Um, it you know, I just. See what, what I get. I get, to... ang- I get the whole anger thing. I get wanting to fucking go ballistic when you get pissed off at certain times. You know what I mean? I get that. Oh yeah. But that is just not the way to go about it, dude. You you, you can't just get in people's faces and scream what you want to happen. You, you, that's just not. You, you know, it's not that person's fault that you're pissed off, right? Uh huh. You know, this got turned... Okay, well, this started out being a police brutality issue, correct? And it should be still a police brutality issue. It should, but it got usurped and taken over by Antifa and BLM. And they fucked it up. They they wrecked the message to me. Because to me, the message still needs to be police reform or whatever you want to call it, okay? They're out of fucking control... And I get the whole, well, they arrest more black people. Yes, in predominantly black areas, yes, that is true. Right. You know, in predominantly white areas, that's not true because they're arresting mostly white people. So this argument doesn't work or hold water with me at all. Well, okay? in, in, in overall numbers, they, they yeah. arrest and kill far more white people. Well, I don't know but, if that's but, true. But, but, no, it is. It is. But... As a percentage by race, if you want to go that direction, uh, then the blacks are way, way, way over uh, in by percentage. So right, I mean, I because, I believe because black, I, I grew up in Minneapolis and I've seen how cops do that to black people and right. people of color. I've seen it happen in the seventies when I was growing up. I've seen it happen in the eighties. I've seen it happen. Well, okay? but you know, blacks are twelve percent of the overall population. Uh, Right, uh, and right. and you know they're, they're and they do target they do get targeted in in major cities especially when there's a mixture of people yeah but when they, when you're in a rural area like I don't know some small town in Wisconsin where there's hard, like two black people or something, you know what I mean yeah they're not just busting those two black people they're no. busting everybody you right. know right. I mean it, it's the cops really I mean they. They, they, they like to throw it around that the cops are racist and they target black people, but in certain areas that might be the case, you know. And I, I know that they use that tactic. I'm not saying they don't. Sure. Do well, they, okay? they they target anybody they can think they can, anybody they can, yeah that, that they can get away with. They, they'll, they'll go after straight people or hookers or or young right. teenagers. Um, yep. They go they go after anybody that that they think is. They they can blame them for whatever, and people will believe them because of of who they were in society as a as a person of society. So you right. know, um, it's really easy to go after certain groups of folks, uh, yeah, and, and and leave other ones alone. Uh, and I know that they and, and, and the argument used to be okay, maybe like let's say uh, fifteen twenty years ago. For instance, the argument used to be, well, all most of the cops are white. Okay? okay, and that might have been true back in the day, but guess what? It's not true now. Yeah, no. There's Asian cops. There's black cops. There's Native American cops. There is all races of cops. Okay. Right. And, you so know, that argument don't hold water either anymore. That all the cops are white. That's not true at all. Not even. No, no. I mean, a lot of the captains and and those people, they're black. Um, you know, whatever it's 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 an right. even thing. They they did that whatever affirmative action stuff. Um, right, and it, exactly, it, it, Donna. They shoot fish in barrels, and the barrels are in the inner city. Yeah, yeah, yeah the barrels are the inner city. Yeah, I get that. I mean, it 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 got taken over and made into a race thing. 
and so, well, yeah, that's no, because uh, the cop was white and George Floyd was black. That's part of the problem. That's well, part that, of that's part of it. I mean, you know, uh, there there is a globalist agenda to uh, yeah. To, to, to do, I, I agree. Oh, sorry, Grim. Go ahead. Well, there is a globalist agenda as well to uh, diminish the white people. Um, be, be, I guess, I mean that's what I've heard, but well, I don't, it's true. I don't, see, I don't hear people talking about and not well, my friend. You know what I mean? You're not going to hear that. people I, talking about it. We 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 don't we don't we don't get a direct insight to what they're what the what the plan is, and it and it's certainly not being covered on any of your uh, clap organizations uh, because no, they, they don't no, want. Of course not. They don't expose their agenda. They just try and carry it out. Right. But they do expose themselves if you just pay attention to read between the lines. They'll, they tell you everything they're going to do. Oh, sure they do, but they they do it in they a do. very sneaky way. And right. then and then if you bring up what their agenda was to them, they'll just yeah. call you a conspiracy theorist. They're like, oh, theorist. no. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. Yeah, oh, no, we're not doing that. That's not we happening. We might have said that, but we didn't mean that. We're not really doing that. Like, <laughs> you misinterpreted. Right. Like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Right. No, well, I agree, um, Donna. She says, no such thing as a white or a black cop. They're all blue. Just, I mean, yeah. once you turn blue, seriously, there is. There's a, there is a fucking brotherhood or a family or whatever they call it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, you know, the focus should have been on that issue, the police brutality issue, and not made an issue about race. It and I've been. done my darndest to make it be about police brutality and try to remind people that's what it should be about, okay? Exactly. It shouldn't be a race war, okay? I hate when people use that term. I mean, why is it called a war? It's, why is that the terminology for it? I don't know, but I mean, it's... You it's, know, it's, that makes no sense to me. It's, Call it's, it a race for some, or I don't know what to call it, but a race for, okay, they they say it's equality, okay, equality, I guess that's what it's about. Yeah, I don't really think it is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, okay, so I'm probably going to get in hot water, but I'm going to say, and I probably said it already, but BLM and Antifa, Antifa, are terror terror organizations right they the organizers or the leaders or whatever get paid for what they are doing okay yeah it is their job to do what they are doing exactly okay they are hired by people whoever it is and they're saying this is what you're going to do you know whatever the next cop thing goes down we're going to just fucking go in there and we're going to take it over and make it about race. And they, they, the people are like, okay, I'll do that. You know? Right. So some people have gotten in trouble for this, but they get bailed out all, right away, you know, by the company, you know, that hired them. Yeah. But they busted whole buses of people. They busted U-Hauls with packed with bricks and sh I don't know whatever else but and, and you know I can be really creative too I can fucking figure out that I can put, if I throw a soup can at my fucking window the window's gonna fucking break dude yeah you know I mean so what to if you're oh shoot I gotta take my dog out room all right okay. Yeah, he's lying at the door, so we might okay. take a music break, and we'll come back and discuss this further. All right, well, I'm going to, and also, uh, when we come back, I'm going to talk about some false flag attacks. Okay, and, sounds uh, good. Well, we'll talk, of course, about other stuff. All right, hello, I, I was yes. like, LOL, Donna. I'm like, I wanted to type that, but I'm on air, so isn't that weird? Like, have you ever done that, Graham? Uh, like, I, I, want, I was going to type LOL, but I said LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I got to go let the dog out, so. Yes. Enjoy, everybody. That's yeah, funny, yeah. Donna. Yeah, she's absolutely right. Uh, call it for what it really is. America's largest street gang is those idiots in blue. Um, so, all right. Uh, we're going to kick it off here with, well, let's go this way here. 
Uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, we're going to kick it off here with some Alice. Alice! All the young girls love Alice. No, not that song. <laughs> we don't get much Elton John on this show. All right, this is Alice Cooper. It's my life, and I'll do what I want. <laughs> it's the animals there. Uh, I think that was a cowboy tech request. Yeah, cowboy tech. Uh, a a anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's my life. I'll do what I want. Uh, before that, we had uh, Steve Winwood with Eric Clapton and Derek Trucks doing Can't Find My Way Home, which is a Steve Winwood song, uh, by the way. Um, also Blind Faith, but yeah. Uh, and we kicked it off there with Alice Cooper doing 18 from 1972 when he was only 24 years old. And uh, he, he he's having a good time up there on that stage back in 1972. Well, he <laughs> could move back then better. He yeah. wasn't old. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he can still do it, though. He still, like, will get all dressed up in his, his outfits and stuff, and he's still... He's still going around. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's out there so, doing it, man. He, he loves he loves making his music and uh, and he does. Yeah, it. it's he, awesome. He Good for it. him. Yeah, he does it very well. I'm pretty sure he has quite a following still. Oh sure. Oh golf. He's a golfer, Donna says. Oh okay. Well, he does a radio show too. He uh, does. He's got that radio show, you know, the yeah. national. So I think it's Saturday night, I want to say, or maybe Sunday night. I don't know. I, I used to hear I'm it. I'm not on, sure. I used to hear it on the XM, but I don't know where he is at now. So. I haven't heard it for a while, so I don't know if he's still doing it. I'll have to look that up. I think he's in Arizona somewhere. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good spot for golf and to keep you young. Apparently, the older you get, I don't know, I think this is true, <laughs> um... You become less tolerable to heat and humidity, and uh, or you you become less tolerable to cold and snow and ice and crap, right? Yeah. So you're like, well, screw this. I'm going to Arizona. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> so I can golf and I can be in a dry heat instead of a humid heat. Well, uh, they, you you know, know, the the old people love it in Florida, and it's there's a lot of humidity. They do, down there. and it's humid as hell down there. Uh, oh, I don't know. So at least they go down there in the winter. You know, from from what I understand, in my experience, growing up in Minnesota, and knowing a lot of snow snowbirds or whatever they call them, they used to call them snowbirds back in the day. Um, for it was Florida or Arizona; those were the hot spots, and they still right. are, as far as I know. Sure, um, sure. To go to, to retire to, you know what I mean, or yeah. have a second home so you can have a winter place. You know, you have two homes, you have one. In, so you're you're not dealing with winter at all, right? Right. But you yeah. still want to have be up in Minnesota a little bit, and, um, and the blue hairs. Right, <laughs> and so yeah, yeah, Donna. So anyway, I mean, it makes sense to me. Like I, the older I get, the less tolerant I am of this fucking the winters. You know, sure. they always seem to last longer and longer every year. It's like really. Yeah. Yeah. If well, I was know. in Florida, or if I was in like South Carolina right now, winter would have been done three months ago. You know, right? When well, it's like March, or you know, well, like let's winter. Say it's fucking, I don't know, winter. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I I do like the four seasons. I mean, yeah, I've had some fun during the winter. You know, there's ice fishing and there's snowmobiling, which I hate. Uh, <laughs> there's cross country skiing. Snowmobiling can be fun. Okay. Sure. But. There's so many people out there that are so reckless on these goddamn machines that, oh, yeah. you know, I would prefer snowmobiling if I'm going like 50 mi or 40 miles per hour, right? Okay. But these motherfuckers, they want to go down these trails at 90 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, it's just an accident rate waiting to happen. You know, it's like riding a, a motorcycle. Well, I mean, let me you tell know? you, 40, 40 miles an hour on, on a snowmobile is hauling ass. Yeah, it is. But uh, these guys want to, no, the machines they make now, Graham, they go 80, 90. No, I'm sure they 100. do, but but if you're out there, right. if, if you're out there, 
uh, on a snowmobile doing 40 miles an hour through the forest. Right. You're, you're, you're hauling ass across the lake, basically. If you're just, well, yeah. No, yeah. but you haven't been on a snowmobile for a while, have you? I've never been on a snowmobile. Oh, okay. Well, they but, make but, them totally can, really fast. Can, They're I like can. those crotch rockets, like the soup up ones. They're like, so you have your regular motorcycle, you yeah. got your crotch rocket, right? Sure. So some of these people, they buy the crotch rocket snowmobile, and most of those people get killed. I'm just saying. Most of those people are going to die because they're reckless. They're one of these adrenaline junkies or whatever. Yeah. And they get a couple of drinks in them, and they think they're invincible, and they've got this fast machine, and they hit a tree, and they're done. They're dead. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, they're from the cities of these rich guys from Chicago or whatever that can afford to buy, like, sure. a $10,000 snowmobile, you yeah. know. And oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're crazy. You know, I they're, could, they're fucking insane. I, I can't even tell you the number of people I've seen hauled out of the desert in a medevac because, and and, and you, you see them out there and you know they're going to crash mm -hmm. because they're, right. they're out there. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They got a brand new machine. They, right. They don't understand. They can't. They can't handle. They don't. They don't understand the power of it. They don't understand how to control the throttle when they're going off of a uh, some kind of a jump or coming up against bumps and stuff like that. Uh, whoop de doos and and so they'll they'll hit one, and if you if you hit the whoop de doo and you're you're not really and you're kind of freaked out anyway because you're new at the whole thing. Your hand, and you're not really ready for it or whatever. Yeah, well, you don't you, know the you, terrain. Your your hand goes backwards on the throttle, which accelerates, oh, which causes acceleration. And and with right. these little machines, that little bit of acceleration can just really <laughs> take you off. So I, I saw a lot of people hauled out of there uh, in, right. in really really bad shape because they had no idea what the I hell bet. they were doing. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to be doing extreme things and have an extreme machine that you're supposed supposedly know how to control it but, but <laughs> and you, how you, to operate it. But I, I would I would say uh, ATVs, quad racers are a very good comparison yeah. to snowmobiles. Um, oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. I mean, so, okay, I'm just going to tell this quick story. I worked at a casino up there in Hayward, and there's a lot of snowmobile trails up there, but there's a lot of, like, farm fields, open fields. And they're not, they look like they're open. Yeah. Like at night, in the dark, when there's snow on the ground. Yeah. The field looks wide open, okay? Sure. Well, you get some asshole that's had a few drinks, you know, he's riding this machine. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm going off trail. I'm going straight across this field, motherfuckers. Yeah. Guess what? He ends up getting his head decapitated. Sure. He ends up getting decapitated because he hits a barbed wire fence that you can't see. Yeah. And the bar, if you're on a snowmobile, this barbed wire fence is the exact height, right height. That's happened a couple times up there. Yeah. Seriously, one guy was actually decapitated, dude. You know? Yeah. Well, because, I, I, oh, I'm going to go across the field. I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm not from this area. I'm just going to go, you know, 90 across this farm field. Oh, guess what, buddy? There's a fence over there, like. 75, 100 yards away, and right. you didn't see it, and you're not slowing down, and you're done. Yeah, I saw that story, JJ. Thanks. What um, story? Uh, California governor orders end of gasoline and diesel cars uh, sales by 2035. Yeah, I which saw is, that okay. too, but that's what, 15 years 15 from now? 15 years, so who, who knows what's going to happen in the interim. But thank you for that. Um, yeah, one thing that I did one time, and it was just because I was unfamiliar with this certain part of the terrain um me and a buddy of mine where we were hauling ass out on our quad racers uh yeah. to, towards this area we were unfamiliar with and um, right, right. it was an area called superstition hills out there that we used to go ride all the time and we went up over this big berm and come down into this it was like a big crater yeah well that crater was apparently a uh a bombing range a bombing test range oh shit uh, oh, for, for, for the for the military. Um, oh no! <laughs> and so and so we get down in there, and it's like whoa, 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 whoa! Because <laughs> there's oh, all because oh, there's, there's all these bombs. They're dummy bombs. You know, they they just drop but dummies. But still, how do you know? I mean, <laughs> well, I I don't know how you know, but they, oh, they're, they're just dummy bombs. Yeah, they're dummy bombs. But the thing is, they're they're big. You know, they're like uh, eighteen inches tall, and they got these big old fins on them and stuff. Right, they're they're metal. And, steel and, or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you hit one of those wrong, that would just slice your tire and you'd be screwed. 
Oh, big time. Yeah, or so, slice you while you're landing. Right. Or if if the if the military decided it was bombing time and you were down in there. Yeah, they could come along, <laughs> drop a couple of them dummy bombs. Yeah. <laughs> they so, won't explode, but if it hits you, you're dead. <laughs> so, so we turned around and got the hell out of there. But uh, Yeah, good idea. Yeah. So without incident. Um but uh, yeah, so yeah, you have to be familiar with the area you're 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 uh, you know going through. But you know, we used to go out there all the time at night and and ride you know all night long during the middle of the summer because you couldn't ride during the day because it was too freaking hot. So oh, I'm sure. So so we we go out there and we ride all night, uh, and there were you know chemical substances that helped us stay awake and keep our eyes open. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but it was great. It was great because you could go out there and and ride all night and then just get the hell out of there, and get out of the desert. Before, yeah, uh, you know before the sun awesome. came. Awesome! No, I bet that was a blast. Oh, it was great. But again, and smoking we, weed, we, again. Yeah, we were familiar you know. with the area, and you know we, right, we, we, right. we you know all, all about the you know we we'd ridden all that area during the day yeah. during you know the the fall. Uh, winter and yeah. spring months, so we we knew the whole. I mean, it was a huge area, you know. Right, you know, oh, desert, ma- ma- yeah. many 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 square miles of area that we could ride. Um, but uh, yeah, if but if you know, and and there was no fences out there, so uh, we didn't have that problem. Right, you didn't have to worry about that. But okay, JJ, I get that because you know, <laughs> as soon as they started putting like computers in cars, that was the issue. Okay, now right. all of a sudden, the average Joe can't work on your car because they don't know what the computer code is. They don't know any of that shit, right? This is back, I want to say, when do you think that happened, Grim? Uh, early What's 80s. I, I think late 70s, 80s, a li- late 70s, a little bit started, but early 80s, they started really putting them in there, yeah. And then uh, the by, by the, ni- by, by the yeah. 90s, I think all the cars had it. Okay, and this, you know, and basically, it... it it used to be where there was no computer in the car, right? Right, you didn't need one. Everything was basic needed. auto mechanics 101. As soon as they add that computer element, now all of a sudden all these mechanics don't know how to work on these cars because they haven't been trained or they haven't had experience in working on these cars, right? Yeah. So this is how Ford and all them dealer or uh, car makers, manufacturers made money. Because you had to go to their dealer, a Ford dealership or a Chevy dealership, to get it worked on, right? Yeah. But now it's things have evolved, and you can buy a machine that will tell you what the codes are. Yeah, I have. But them. then you, if there's like twenty codes, you're like, oh, okay, well, I have to rule out twenty things now. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, it tells you exactly what's wrong. As soon as you plug that thing in and you hit the thing to analyze, right. yeah, it, it tells you what the what what what. Is wrong and it uses well, see, a code. Well, see, that's not what happened in my circumstance because they said like ten things came up when we plugged it in. Well, but it could be, and I'm like, this is a scam. You guys gonna so it's gonna cost me a thousand dollars. Okay, know, well let me let me tell you. Guys I, just, like test these ten things. Like, come all right, on. well I'll tell you, I I have one of those, and they're, they're really fairly okay. fairly inexpensive to buy those little computer oh, things. You're right, they are. You can buy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got one. I was having a problem with my Jeep. And and uh, and so I plugged it in, and it said misfiring on cylinder three. So oh, okay, I, I cool. knew exactly where to go to pull that spark plug out and 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 uh, put put the right you know get it fixed to working right, and uh, put it back in and clear the codes, and then uh, yeah, I mean it was really simple. And so uh, and maybe it's different with like some electrical system issues or whatever. Um, right, it might. It depends on what the issue is. I mean, if it's a a, a spark plug issue, then it's going to read that right away. Well, I, and I think it, it's it's pretty direct on a lot of things. Um, okay. And, and there's, so, there's so a, they have different like whatever codes come up. Yeah. Then you can look up each code and see. Okay, this is this. This is, you know what I mean. You can kind of diagnose that way too. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you have it. Just gives you an area. To look at JJ. I mean, it, of course, it's not going to say go do this and fix your car, um, but you know, it gets it gets you in the right direction of, of what the hell is going on. Right, what's right, with it. for sure. Oh yeah, they're helpful to have. Yeah, and, and I don't I, I don't know on yours on yours or not, but on at least on my Jeep, it came up and it said 
you know, error code or whatever. Uh, oh, okay. You know, take to service or something like that. I forget what the message was on the yeah. dashboard. Um, uh, and, and I got a kick out of Rome's because he just got a like a hybrid car. Yeah. And he's like, I have to reset it. <laughs> and he's like, I got to go into the, onto the website to reset my car. It's like so bizarre. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, we're, we're old school grub. I know. I know. We remember yeah. before well, the internet, before see, all this computerized crap. I mean, see. it just cracked me up. I'm like, oh, my God. He's got to go. It's like. It's gonna magically update it. You see, you see what Donna said it's there. Really, the, it's bizarre. <laughs> what? You, see, you see what Donna said there in the chat that she used yeah. to have a rule of never buying anything after eighty three or eighty four, which well, there you go. was great for a period of time. But now, right. buying now, a, it's like a, yeah. yeah, that's pretty difficult because those are you know forty year old cars. And they're and, not rusted out, or you know, don't need all this work, you know, on them. Yeah, or getting parts, you know, getting parts for those. Oh old yeah, cars. big time. That's it's, hard it's too. It's pretty yeah. difficult. So uh, unless you have your own machine shop where you can fab up your own parts. Um. Yeah. <laughs> See, Donna's a freaking badass. She's like a car she mechanic. Is a she and she worked at some like facility where she was like some genius or something. I don't know. You have to tell me, Donna, what you did. You anyway, worked at some plant, you said, and they kept moving you up or something. She she's multi talented. Yeah, she is very. She's yeah. an artist. She's she's just a total badass all around. I mean, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. I gotta give credit where credit's due. I gotta give props, girl. I I, got, <laughs> I just gotta. I mean, we do that here sometimes, you know. Yeah. We give credit where credit is due. Anyway, um, you said you had some stuff, Grim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have this uh, this right. uh, story. It's an old story, an old article. Uh, that was originally posted back in uh, 2015. Wow! Uh, but it's okay. but but it's uh, uh, they re- reposted it and it's still relevant and still accurate. And uh, for those of the people out there that think government is lovely and wonderful and loves them, um, <laughs> 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 this is posted on globalresearch.ca. Wrong! Uh, they don't love you. No, no, no they do not. Uh, so it's posted on globalresearch.ca. It was also posted on Washington's blog, um, which has nothing to do with D.C., by the way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a guy. Uh, so uh, this was uh, originally posted back in 2015, and it's called 53 Admitted False Flag Attacks. Not theory. Admitted wow. fact. Admitted wow. fact. So it says there, okay. are, there are many documented false flag attacks where a government carries out a terror attack and then falsely blames its enemies for political purposes. In the following, it says 42 instances here, but there's 53 now. Uh, officials in the government which carried out the attack or seriously proposed an attack admits to it either orally or in a writing. Uh, the wow. first, The first one they have here is Japanese troops set off a small explosion on a train track in 1931 and falsely blamed it on China in order to justify the invasion of Manchuria. This is known as the Mukden Incident or the Manchurian Incident. Uh, The Tokyo International Tribunal found several of the participators in the plan, including Hashimoto, a high-ranking Japanese army officer, have on various occasions admitted their part of the plot and have stated that the object of the incident was uh, to afford an excuse for the occupation of Manchuria by the Kwantung Army. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Next one, a major in the Nazi SS admitted that the Nuremberg trials under orders, or at the Nuremberg trials, not that, at the Nuremberg trials, under orders from the chief of the Gestapo, he and some other Nazi operatives faked attacks on their own people and resources, which they blamed on the Poles to justify the invasion of Poland. Uh, Nazi uh, General, not Hans, Franz Halder, also testified at the Nuremberg trials that the Nazi leader, Hermann Goering, admitted to setting fire to the German parliament in 1933 and then falsely blamed the communists for the arson. Uh, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev admitted in writing that the Soviet Union's Red Army shelled the Russian uh, village of Manila, 
Manila, okay, uh, while blaming the attack on Finland as a basis for launching the winter war against Finland. Uh, Russia's President Boris Yeltsin agreed that Russia had been the aggressor in the winter war. Uh, Russian Parliament, current Russian President Putin, and former Soviet leader Gorbachev all admit that the Soviet leader Stalin ordered his secret police to execute 22,000 Polish army officers and civilians in 1940 and then blame that on the Nazis. The British government admits that between 1946 and 1948, it bombed five ships carrying Jews attempting to flee the Holocaust to uh, seek safety in Palestine, set up a fake group called Defenders of Arab Palestine, and then had the pseudo-group uh, falsely claim responsibility for the bombings. Israel also admits that in 1954, an Israeli terrorist cell operating in Egypt planted bombs in several buildings, including U.S. diplomatic facilities, then left behind, quote, evidence, unquote, implicating the Arabs as the culprits. One of the bombs detonated prematurely, allowing the Egyptians to identify the bombers, and several of the Israelis later confessed. The CIA admits that it hired Iranians in the 1950s to pose as communists and stage bombings in Iran in order to turn the, wow. con in order to turn the country against its democratically elected prime minister. You may, you may recall some of that story. Um, they admitted this one. Oh, yeah, the CIA admitted that. It, 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 there's, a, there's a link. Wow. Why the, would they do that, though? Why would they admit it? Why did they admit it? Why would they? Why would they? I don't know. Maybe they figured it was long enough. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, okay. The, all right. All right. The, the, the Turkish prime minister admitted that the Turkish government carried out in uh, the 1955 bombing on the Turkish consulate in Greece, also damaging a, the nearby birthplace of the founder of modern Turkey and blamed that on the Greece or on Greece for the purpose of inciting and justifying an anti Greek uh, violence. Um the British Prime Minister admitted to his defense secretary that he and the American President Eisenhower approved the plan in nineteen fifty seven to carry out attacks in Syria and then blame it on the Syrian government. Sound familiar? Uh, as yeah, a that sounds very familiar. As a way to affect Regime change. So of course, that's what they do. That's the government, U.S. government's been doing that for a long. The same time. thing that's been going on in Syria since around 2007, 2009, right. somewhere in that range. Yeah, went on way back then in 1957. Yeah, they've been doing the this for a while, you guys. Same not new thing. shit, right? Um, uh, numbers 11 through 21. This is a. a a, a lengthy paragraph. Um, the, the former Italian prime minister and Italian judge and the former head of the Itali Italian counter counterintelligence admit that NATO, with the help of the Pentagon and CIA, carried out terror bombings in Italy and other Euro European countries in the 1950s and blamed the communists in order to rally people's support for their governments. In Europe, their fight against communism... Uh, as well, as one participant in this formerly secret program stated, you have to attack civilians, people, women, children, innocent people, unknown people, far removed from any political game. Uh, uh, the reason was quite simple. They were supposed to use or supposed to force these people, the Italian public, to turn to the state to ask for greater security. Italian and other countries uh, subject to the terror campaign had joined NATO before the bombings occurred. And uh, watch, there's a link to a BBC special here about that. Uh, they also allegedly yeah. carried out terror attacks in France, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, Greece, and the Netherlands, Norway, oh God. Norway, Portugal, the UK, and other countries. <laughs> Uh, false nice. False, really great. Really uh, great. I'm yeah, telling you. Go. Uh, false flag Sorry. attacks. <laughs> false flag attacks carried out pursuant to this program include, by way of example, uh, the the murder of the Turkish Prime Minister in 1960, bombings in Portugal in 1966, the Piazza Fontana massacre in Italy in 1969, terror attacks in Turkey in 1971, the P Pitiano bombing in Italy in 1972. Shootings in Brescia, Italy, and a bombing 
on the, an Italian train in 1974, shootings in Istanbul, Turkey in 1977, the Ataka massacre in Madrid 1977, the abduction and murder of the Italian Prime Minister in 1978, uh, the bombing of Bologna, Bologna, whatever, uh, railway station in Italy in 1980, the shooting and killing of 28 shoppers in Brabant County, Belgium in 1985. <sighs> well, there's a whole bunch. Yeah, so basically, but people died in all these instances. Oh yeah, they they go out and they don't mind killing they, people. A, they murdered people. They they love they love killing. Kill, let me let me jump. They planned it. To, they planned to murder people. What does that tell you? Well, let, let, let me jump down to some of the more oh modern. Oh my god! Okay, more, I'll, some of the I'll more, mute again. <laughs> some some of the some of the more modern ones here. Um, okay, well, where do we start here? Um, all right, we'll, we'll start with number forty-one. Uh, the, the United States falsely blamed Iraq for playing a role in the 9-11 attacks, as shown by memo from the Defense Secretary, as one of the main justifications for launching the Iraq War, even after the 9-11 Commission admitted there was no connection. Dick Cheney said that the evidence is overwhelming that al-Qaeda had a relationship with Saddam Hussein's regime that uh, Cheney probably had information unavailable to the commission, and that the media was not doing their homework on reporting such ties. Top U.S. government officials now admit that the Iraq war was really launched for oil, not for 9-11 or weapons of mass destruction. Despite previous lone wolf claims, uh, many U.S. government officials now say that 9-11 was state-sponsored terror, but Iraq was not the state which backs the hijackers. Many U.S. officials allege that 9-11 was a false flag operation by rogue elements of the United States government. And number 42, although the FBI now admits that the 2001 anthrax attacks were carried out by one or more U.S. government scientists, a senior FBI official says the FBI was actually told to blame the anthrax, uh, anthrax attacks on al-Qaeda by White House officials. Remember what the anthrax letters looked like? Government officials also confirm that the White House, oh, yeah. the White House tried to link the anthrax to Iraq. You remember uh, uh, Colin Powell holding up his little vial? Oh, yeah. Uh, so they tried to link the anthrax to Iraq as a justification for regime change in that country. Um Number 43, former Department of Justice lawyer John Yu suggested in 2005 that the U.S. should go on the offensive against al-Qaeda, having our in, uh, our intelligence... That was Bush, right? Uh, yeah, Bush was still there in 2005. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Having our intelligence ag agencies create a false terrorist organization, it could have its own websites, recruitment centers, trading camps, and fundraising operations. It could launch fake terrorist operations and claim credit for real terrorist strikes, helping to sow confusion within al-Qaeda's ranks, causing operatives to doubt others' identities to question the validity of communications. Uh, from the UPI, uh, United Press International, report on June 2005, U.S. intelligence officers are reporting that some of the insurgents in Iraq are using recent model Beretta 92 pistols, but the pistols seem to have had their serial numbers erased. The numbers do not appear to have been physically removed. The pistols seem to have come off a production line without any serial numbers. Analysts suggest the lack of serial numbers indicate that the weapons were intended for intelligence operations or terrorist cells with substantial government backing. Analysts speculate that these guns are probably either Mossad or the CIA. Analysts speculate that the agent provocateurs uh, may be using untraceable weapons, even as the United States authorities use insurgent attacks against civilians as evidence of the legitima legitimacy of the resistance. Uh, next is the undercover Israeli soldiers admitted in 2005 to throwing stones at other Israeli soldiers so they could blame it on the Palestinians as an excuse to crack down on peaceful protests by the Palestinians. They're still doing that to this day, by the way. Um, 
they do it all the time. They go over there and they, and they lob like a little missile or something, you know, just a dummy missile. Oh, yeah, missile. they're still not gone they, with that they, one. They go into Palestine and they lob, lob a dummy missile to some place where it's not going to hurt anybody in, in, in Israel and say, oh, look, the Palestinians are, are lobbing missiles at us. Right. Let's bomb the holy hell out of them. Um, okay. Quebec, right. Quebec police admitted that in 2007, thugs carrying rocks to a peaceful protest were actually undercover Quebec police officers. <laughs> At imagine the, that. Imagine, no, really? Oh, imagine. no way. Yeah. No, no, uh, no. I, I, they didn't do that. No, never. At the G- they wouldn't do that. No, 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 of course not. Of course, <laughs> you wouldn't find pallets of bricks strategically pro- placed around right. protests. Oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. At the G20 protest in London in 2009, a British member of Parliament saw plainclothes police officers attempt to in, attempting to incite the crowd to violence, which that's mild, but they, they're out there and they do that. Um, and just like they'll they'll park a car in the middle of an area where they know it's going to be torn to bits by protesters. And then if no protesters attack that car, they'll send one of their own guys out there dressed as a protester to attack the car uh, and so that all the rest of them jump in on it. <laughs> uh, Egyptian police admitted uh, that the government employees looted priceless museum artifacts in 2011 to try and discredit protesters. Uh, a Colombian ar- army colonel admitted that his unit murdered 57 civilians, then dressed them in uniforms, and claimed they were rebels in combat. So not only did they just go out and kill a whole bunch of people, then they dress them up as, as whoever the enemy is supposed to be. Uh, the highly respected writer for The Telegraph, Ambrose Evans Pritchard, says that the head of the Saudi intelligence, Prince Bandar, recently admitted that the Saudi government controls Chechen terrorists. Which, again, not a shock. Um, High-level American sources no. ad- admitted that the Turkish government, a fellow NATO country, carried out chemical weapons attacks blamed on the Syrian government, which we talked about. We knew it was it was uh, coming from either the U.S. or Turkey at that point in time when they were saying, oh, Assad is, is, is using chemical weapons. Bullshit. We, we knew that was bullshit at the time. So uh, they, they admit, uh, this high-level American source has admitted, there's a link to this, uh, to, to, uh, to all, all of these things here, uh, the, with the actual reference data. Uh, so, uh, so they carried out those uh, attacks and blamed the Syrian government, uh, and high-ranking Turkish government admitted on tape plans to carry out attacks and blame it on the Syrian government. Uh, the former Ukrainian security chief admits that the sniper attacks, which started the Ukrainian coup, uh, were carried out in order to frame others. Uh, Britain's spy agency has admitted that it carries out digital false flag attacks on targets, framing people by writing offensive or unlawful material and blaming it on the target. So common? There's a name for it. The use of the bully's trick is so common that it was given a name hundreds of years ago. False flag terrorism is defined as a government attacking its own people, then blaming others in order to justify going to war against its people. <laughs> anyway, like I said, this was written in 2015, so um, you can imagine if this was updated to today, all the, all the new ones that we would see there. Oh, there, yeah, there'd there, be a lot more. There's tons of it. And I skipped over a whole bunch there. So, yeah, you did. So yeah, you, you guys did, totally. you want to yeah. use that as a reference document? There I it mean, is. I mean, that's how many there are. You can't even get through it in a segment in our show because right. it's, it's, it's the list is so long. Right. And it so, goes way back. Yeah. Right. And, and so, and, and you're right. And like I said, it cuts off in 2015. So, uh, if, if right. you know, the, over the last five years, there's been a ton more. And, oh, there has. Oh, big time. And and there's you can expect more coming up to a city near you. It's what they do. It's very fantastic. soon. I mean, the big. I, I know I've said this before, but the biggest or one of the um, ways to learn about what's coming yeah. is to research history. And I've said that so many times. But um, you know, this Green New Deal 
Oh. It's not going to work. It's it's so outrageous. Oh, and, and I am not like a Republican, okay? Yeah. I am not. But these other fucking people are. Oh, it's not. Their, well, you know, it's, 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 fucking, they don't know what they're doing. The, the whole uh, what? The, the whole anthropogenic global warming nonsense. Which which right. leads to the Green New Deal and the and, yeah. the and the Greta nonsense and all that stuff. It's all bogus, and we know it's all bogus. Just look up Climate Gate if you're not familiar with what happened. They faked all the data, <laughs> and, yeah. and then and then once people started pointing out, it's hey, hey, this is fake data. They started suing the people, pointing out the fact yeah. that they faked the right. data. Exactly. <laughs> and then, and then, okay, no, no, I got, oh, go ahead, Graham. Then, then, then their, their emails were hacked, and then all, yep. all, all of their hacked emails were exposed, and yep. then, and then they, they said, oh no, 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 they, they, they edited our emails, which of course they did not edit those emails. You, you falsified the data, <laughs> right? <laughs> to get the whole global warming scam going. Exactly. Uh, back, yeah, back, and back by. wrote that book, and he made that movie, right? And he's a, fucking billionaire now and he's yeah. living the life of luxury he and got, he's making a huge carbon footprint. He don't give a fuck anymore about he, his fucking carbon footprint. He, he got his no I made the money. I'm good. He got his Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, he got his fucking just the reward, quote unquote. Yeah. Okay, so I was gonna respond to JJ's comment. Okay, go ahead. Um I'd like to think not the ones protesting are the ones who are anti-gun. I don't believe that. For one thing, I don't believe that they're anti-gun because a lot of them have guns on them. Yeah. Um, and the right to have the guns, and they sit on their ass. The right has the guns. No, the right is not the only group that has guns, dude. Okay? <laughs> right, not guns at all. Guns are very easy to get in this country. Okay? Yeah. So oh, yeah. You, can't, you can't just say this group has guns and this group doesn't. All, that all is of, dumb. All of okay? the, all of those, that is tunnel vision. That is stupid. Okay, what? All, all of those people in the government that are, that are screaming, we got to take the guns, we got to take the guns, they all either have guns or armed guards uh, right. protecting them. Uh, exactly. So that means we got to get your guns, not their guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, for, okay, so you're saying, and then he says they sit on their asses and do nothing, total bootlickers. No. The only way I'm going to use my gun, I hope, <laughs> is for self-defense. Right. Okay? Right. That's, that's, that's why I bought my gun. I bought my gun for self-defense. Okay? Yeah. I'm not going to go out and shoot some motherfucker for the government. I will not do that. Right. Fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's right, I'm Donna. not doing your dirty work, asshole. Fuck you. And, and caps love guns. If so. you fucking want to come at me, <laughs> your ass will get shot, cunt. <laughs> Otherwise, leave me the fuck alone and we will have no problem. Absolutely. As soon as you fucking come at me and threaten my life, your ass is getting fucking shot. You're going down, motherfucker. You're going down, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, it might man. not even be a gun. It might be a baseball bat to the fucking side of your goddamn head. That's you right, man. That's right. But uh, that's the only way I'm going to do do violence, okay, is if I'm being physically, my life is being Yeah, I, I don't okay? consider it violence to protect yourself. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah. It's called self-defense. That's right. That's right. Yes. You're, you're protecting yourself against violence. So, right. But you know what, JJ? So they're ass backwards because, yeah, they're sitting there screaming gun control. When all, how many BLM and Antifa do you think have actual firearms? Right, right. Think about that. Oh, yeah, a just, lot just, of them do. Just, just, just okay? look at these protests. They're out there. They have two they're, cops they're, are shot in Louisville. BLM shot them cops in Louisville. Yeah, they're, I'm they're not packing. pro cop. They're, those guys, they're, but they're, they're they are there. loaded. They are armed. BLM and Antifa are armed. The left is not unarmed. Yeah, and so also is, you shouldn't think that way, dude. Uh, ne- I, I don't. Ne- I don't agree with that. Yeah. Ne- well, ne- neither uh, neither BLM or Antifa are grassroots organizations. Exactly. Those they're guys not, are heavily funded. Heavily funded, and and yeah. uh, they they bring all this stuff up to try and get the people fired up. So anyway, um, they, they hire yeah, people to go to these cities and start this shit, dude. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They hire people and 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 to they go to these and, cities. Yep. And they own and control the media to get the media to fire it up as well. Yes. 
So, yes, they do. Yeah. Thank you, JJ. I, I, I'm not trying to yell at you or be, come down on you or anything. I'm just trying to have a discussion. You know what I mean? No, no, JJ's like, freaking cool, man. The media wants you to think what you think, JJ. You know what I mean? Do not get your information from mainstream media. No. It's just not, no, any, I don't care what channel it is. If it's mainstream media, shut the fucking shit up. Don't even watch it anymore. Yeah, I tune mean, in, that's tune just in. my advice to everybody. Like, you guys need to see what's going on here. Don't get your fucking news and your your reasoning from the mainstream media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Tune into uh, Clyde Lewis when 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 we're right. not well, if yeah. we're if we're not live. If we're live, tune in to us. But <laughs> right, the only time we conflict the Freakers Ball is Friday night. Otherwise, yeah, Clyde's Monday through Friday, nine to midnight. Uh, yeah, check him out, man. Central time. Check out Clyde. <laughs> All Clyde right. is, and he needs support because this is a story I was going to talk about, Grim. The censoring, the censorship. Okay, so apparently, come next Thursday, which will be the day before the next Freakers Ball. Yeah. Some big shit's happening. Some big changes are going to happen with media, the social media, right? And all these um, people, not us, but people like us, like Clyde. And like other outlets, news outlets, sure, are feeling gonna feel some pain on October first because one thing, Facebook. Okay, so I've been watching Todd Snyder every Sunday for like six months. Okay, yeah, because he's been doing some live streams from this building in Nashville, and they they can post their their donation links on there, right? Wait, 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 like, hang on, I'm breaking news here. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, what's, what's going on? Donna says she may not have an FB after the first. Now, I'm assuming that means... That's a, a Facebook. Oh, I, I was thinking fuck buddy. No. <laughs> you would think that, Grim. <laughs> no, I knew what she meant by FB. <laughs> I think I'm going to end it too, Donna. I swear to God, like... I, let's me and you collaborate sometime on Wire, and we'll talk on Skype if you have to have Skype. <laughs> but I think you and I need to have, like, a brainstorming session because I think we're both really creative, and I think we would make a good team. I think you would, too. That'd be great. I, 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 I do, would, too. I would, I would yeah. love to. And All right. so let's just, we'll get back on that later. I'll, I'll contact you, Donna. Okay. Let's do a, let's do a music break here. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, and, and we'll we'll come back uh, and talk about more cool, fun, right. weird stuff. Because I, I'll just I, I I okay, good idea, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll be back after the break, people. Thanks yeah. for tuning in, everyone. I love you guys. You guys yeah. are awesome. Tio Sunday nights at nine on Q one hundred four three. Yeah, Q one hundred four three. <laughs> All right, that was Marcus King uh, doing a song uh, called Beautiful Stranger, courtesy of Moose Girl there. Uh, before that was Gary Clark Jr. Uh, doing the Beatles' Come Together, live from Lollapalooza 2019. But he just put that video out uh, last Saturday, I think. Yeah, last Saturday. So an uh, uh, awesome version of uh, Come Together there. And we kicked it off with another Moose Girl request. I think it was Moose Girl request. R.E.M., it's the end of the world, as we know it. And I feel fine. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, how are you like in the end of the world, Moose? <laughs> huh, 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 huh? You there? Hello, hello? Am I on? Yeah, I'm on. I had to do, I had to do the changing. Oh, you know? okay, okay, okay. And I was typing. <laughs> While you were doing the song thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I'm just going to say that Donna is a badass. Not only a badass, but she's also a grandmother. I, 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 I think I, I think you have a girl crush. I do. I really do. I love Donna. I mean, I, I, I might. I might have a girl crush. But it's not, like, in the lesbian way, Donna. Like, don't even worry about that. You know, Aww. don't even worry about that. It's not like that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would be bummed about that. Girl. You would. Yeah, you would. You would. But, no, I, um, 
<laughs> no, oh. but um, I just like meeting cool people and knowing cool people, and you rock too, Donna. I mean, that, that's how shit happens. Is you brainstorm with people, you collaborate with people. You know what I mean? And that's I think is a good thing, and that's what I'm wanting to happen like I think it should go back to that like or not even I don't know if it was ever that way but where people have their own businesses and their own you know what I mean Graham do you know what I'm saying they didn't like rely on the system so much you know what I mean sure and rely on getting a job at a corporation like right. you you grew up and you've got a job doing what you do what you're good at you know what I mean? Yeah. Not what they someone tells you you should do. You right. know, what kind of life is that? Working a job that you don't really like, doesn't pay enough, the benefits suck. I mean, that's that's where we a lot of people are at right now. Grim. Yeah. You know, right. I played that game for so long, it's like right now, I seriously don't want to go into a real job anymore. I don't. Well, I may have I may have something for you. We are wild, trust. Mooses are wild animals. They are crazy. They're wild, and they're fucking powerful, and they're fucking strong. But they're just and called they're, moose. They're not called mooses. Moose, right. It's just like saying two mice is mises, and mises isn't a word either. <laughs> <laughs> I got mises from Tom and Jerry cartoons, okay? Yeah, I know, I know. So that's why I thought it could have been mises. Well, but since, I learned, you know, it's not mises. Moose, it's moose. It's mice. Moose, since you don't want to do a regular job, I, I, I may have something here for you. Okay. Bring it on, dude. Michelob Ultra will pay someone. Ick, ick. Uh, who cares? You don't have to like the beer. Okay, um, good. Okay. Uh, Michelob Ultra will pay someone $50,000. What? To, to explore national parks. All right, sign me up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But if I have to drink their beer, the deal is done. No, you I'll don't. I'll be like, spot and call, or the deal's off. <laughs> okay, anyway. Just... I'll be like, let, let me, like, let, let spot and call be sold all over the country, not only Wisconsin, and I'll do that job. All right. Like, the, that would be my only condition, probably. Okay, well, let's post it on... I don't know the deal yet, but... Uh, you know. It's posted on katu.com. <laughs> crazy a popular oh a, a popular a popular beer brand is officially hiring a very for a very unique position chief exploration officer is the title for Michelob Ultra Pure Gold the job comes with an office with a great view lots of travel and of course plenty of beer of course, that's their beer. Uh, if but, it has to be Michelob, though, I can't do that. I can't yeah, yeah, do that yeah, yeah, I can't do yeah, it. Yeah. My stomach will fucking get a yeah, hole in it. Yeah, don't okay. have to drink it. Um, on, okay. On the, on, if it's Spotted Cow or Blue Moon, okay, I'll okay. get it for it. Here, listen, listen. <laughs> on the brand's website, the ideal yeah. candidate is described as someone who has a deep appreciation for nature. That's you. That's me. Who yep. will take the best photos at the national park to share on the company? That is me as well. Social media, um, uh, yes. Uh, on the six month journey, here's the problematic. I'm totally qualified. I'm totally qualified. Uh, here, here's the problematic part. Uh oh. You'll also need to agree to follow CDC guidance for coronavirus. Oh, well, come on. Well, do, oh, you know, the mask okay, thing. But, but, if I'm in the open and there's no one around, right. I'm not having no fucking mask on. Come right. But, you know right, that's right. No, but, but, but right. listen, okay. The chosen applicant will be provided with a camper van equipped with a bathroom and a shower. Yes! As, yes! Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Keep listening. As well as gas money. A plus, okay. A plus one is also allowed. Partner, oh, okay, my dog. Partner, I mean, it would be my dog. Yeah. Partner or dog. Oh, there you go, see. Okay, twenty-one years or older. You're 12, twenty-one years or older with a valid driver's license. Uh, Michelob says the job pays fifty thousand dollars, and applications. I like it. Applications can be submitted through September thirtieth. So we only got a few days. Wow, but, I got I got two days, three days. They, they have a they have a link. They, they have a link here. 
You, 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 okay, how so, many people do you think apply for this bill? Uh, who knows? A million people apply. Whatever. For you you can apply. You're a, you're <laughs> All right. I'll, I mean, if I had to promote, submit a video, though, I might have an issue with that. I mean, I could do a quick little thing. You're you're a seasoned you know, naturist. I am a nature. I've always taken pictures in the, in the nature. I, that's like my thing. Like, that's my mom. Like, she'll back me up. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just, going. You just sign cru- up, do it, do it. Cru- cruise around, cruise around to uh, national parks. Sign up, trust no one. But who would be your plus one, trust no one? You got to think about that. You can't be Rachel. He could take a dog. Because yeah, he could do a dog. He could do Buttercup. Yeah, sell the beer. Yeah, he could do Buttercup <laughs> or Riggs, which one ever. You know, they're both of them. I mean, that's right. Sell their know. beer and buy the beer you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fucking crazy dogs. Okay, go ahead. Oh, anyway. I have a crazy dog, too, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, Donna. You, Donna's plus one has to be able to drive a vehicle. Okay, well, your plus one will have to... Uh, hey, I can be your plus one, Donna. Your you plus one. Up for you, you, it, you'll win, and then I'll be your plus one, and I'll be your driver. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> No, the dog can't drive. Yeah, I mean, as much go. as they probably could learn how to do it, like the pedals are not fit for a dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you you would have to have a vehicle modified and have to train the dog how to drive. And I don't. Well, know. it's a it's a camper like, van. It's a camper van with with, with a shower right. and a kitchen. I, 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 that's perfect. Yeah, it's fucking great, man. Yeah, that's fucking. That would be like <laughs> my ideal life. Like right there, it would be yeah. it would be my ideal life. Yeah, it seriously would. Like oh, traveling right, right. around the country, well, I yeah, love that. You, Going you, to national parks. You you are the reason I saved that link. So that okay, <laughs> I, thank you, Grum. Thank you. Yes, it is a. Per- it would be awesome. It would be amazing. Yeah. So it, get on like in, a get, blog and go shit. in there, yeah. click click the link and apply. And uh, but, right. yeah, you never know. Yeah. You, you never know. You never know. I mean, but I'm a little late applying. No, you still got five days. Okay. All yeah. right. I do. Yeah. I can do it. I can do this. I can apply. Yep. But I need to, like, write something, like, you know, you need to make, like, your video, like, good. Well, I don't you even, this, it, I don't like, think it asks, I don't think it asks for a video. Oh, it doesn't? Well, I don't know. You have to go look at the application, but it doesn't say anything about it. I will. A, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll try it. it I'll look at it. It didn't say anything yeah. about a video in the article. So. See, tr- Donna, there you go. Trust no one can act like a dog. <laughs> and be a driver. That would work. Thank you, Donna. I will. I will check it out. Yeah, I, I will I, I, look I, into it. I can yeah. hear trust cool. no one right now. <laughs> Barking Thank like a dog with his tongue hanging out, <laughs> doing out the window while yeah. he's driving. He'll be. He'll be saying. He'll be. <laughs> Maybe he'll be, not while he's driving. But. He'll. He'll be. He'll be singing Iggy Pop. I want well, to be he your... has to be the one driving because Donna can't drive for sure. We know that. He'll All be... Rose has to do is be able to drive and act like a dog occasionally. He'll be, he'll be singing Iggy Pop. I think that a... would be, yeah. Like I said, he'll be singing Iggy Pop, I want to be your dog. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Oh, okay. God. It's a half moon tonight, Grim. You now, know what now, that means. Now, we, now, oh, no, I don't. It's even weirder than a full moon. The half okay. moon, I swear to God. A half moon's weirder shit than the full moon. All right, well, it the says full first moon, quarter. Get weird. It says first quarter. Says first quarter here happened on Wednesday. Well, the first quarter. It's a half moon. I looked at it tonight. It's a half moon. Yeah. Close enough to have. Right. Okay, so we haven't talked about any <laughs> of the, the the stupid corona crap tonight. Yeah, I don't want to really. Do we? But have I want to talk about this mask. Okay, story. that's it's, fine. It's Whatever. a mask story. Okay. I don't want it either, Donna, but, you know, you're a co-host, so I have to, you know, concede yeah. sometimes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mask fanatics have officially abandoned science to control your life. They know better than the experts they revered just months ago. Those oh, experts, yeah, right. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. Those experts now have a different opinion, but they don't care. Because they they want masks, which, by the way, and I don't have a, a link to this or anything, but many of those masks, if you buy those 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 fold up kind of mask things, they they have uh, RFID tracking chips in them. <laughs> I'm not shitting you either. 
What? Which one? Which bit? Any mask? Not the homemade ones. People no, 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 no. Of masks. course not the homemade ones, but uh, those Just like the, the those those blue, blue ones. those blue fan fold ones. Paper you know? ones. Yeah, the blue paper ones. They're yeah. made out of paper. Yeah, they have RFID tracking chips in them. Okay. Great. My son was wearing one. Like, if he's been wearing one in his house at his where he's supposed to be quarantined, that's dumb. I, I will call him tomorrow and tell him, do not wear your mask while you're in the house. And, ju- and the just other people that are all positive too. And, like, and just yeah. and just throw in there that those masks are all contaminated with corona. Right, and he's not even. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know that that's true. I'm it's just... like they're trying to make the college kids sick. <laughs> Look, like right when college started, like two weeks ago, when when college started up, even though the kids have been partying all summer, house parties, blah blah blah. All of a sudden, school starts. Oh, now there's a COVID outbreak. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I don't think my kid has COVID. Well, they, Even they if he spray- tested positive for it, I don't think he has it. They, He's they, not fucking sick. They, they spray the kids with COVID as they walk into the school. They might. No, I don't think not elementary because no. <laughs> ele- okay, so some know. elementary schools and shit are K through twelve are actually going to classes, right? Well, in some states, so the, in some states, yeah. everything you know, the schools are fully open. But the so. teenagers and the K through twelve kids aren't the ones that were targeted, Grim. Two weeks ago, it was the colleges that were targeted. Sure. There's a reason for that. I know it's a conspiracy thing. I know it's bullshit because they wanted to fucking say. Oh, uh, look what happened. We sent these kids back to school, and now they're all testing. Yeah, but guess what? Before that, they said, the classes are going to be mostly online. So then, when school started, all of a sudden, there's this COVID outbreak. But guess what? Why wasn't there one during the summer when they were all partying their asses off? Right? Uh, yeah. And, and being in groups of 25 or 30 people, right? Right. Oh, no, as soon as school started, now all these kids are positive, quote-unquote. It's like, this is a fucking scam, dude. Well, well I, 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 my kid is not sick. Dude. They they could also be infecting, infecting them with the test. Right, exactly. Oh, what's on that swab that you're well, summing up my kid's nose? Well, here's the, here, but here's you know the real... I mean? Oh, but, my God, I'm so fucking fed up with this but, shit. But here, I'm but, so but, done, but, dude. But here's the real thing. There's no corona. That uh, so right. when that's they what, when they when so when my they, kid's uh, not sick. Ugh. So when, when they test you, they they can say you're positive or negative. It doesn't matter. Uh, and they're going to say, well, right, I, right. We, we need this many positives, so we'll, we'll test right. X amount, yep. and we'll say these these people over here are positive, because hey, we we need that that numbers. And and here's right. here's part of the reason or a portion mm-hmm. of that. From this article, it's nothing new for political uh, religions to produce radicals that develop their own sex or cults. This time around, rigid devotion to enforcing mass compliance has produced runaway fanaticism based on nothing but blind faith that more mask wearing is always better. Even the public health experts... Of course they're going to say that. They want you to get <laughs> sick. It's like they, they're they wanting people to get fucking well, they, sick. Well, they, they want you to believe you're sick, whether you're, you know... Right. They want you to think you are. That's what I think it is. It's a psychological thing. Because, seriously, when I dropped that food off to Zach, I'm, I put a mask on because so he supposedly paused I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can't even touch my son. Like, he has to, like, take the groceries out. It, it's just like... This is a psyop, you guys. Oh, big time, big time. It's a psyop. <laughs> they're they're testing you to see what you will put up with. Will you put up with being far apart from your relatives? Will you put up with this? Oh, if you go around your grandmother right now, even though you have no symptoms, you might kill her. You're gonna kill grandma. <laughs> it's fear more it's fear porn, it's fear mongering, it's a fucking hoax. You can't trust the test. You can't trust their numbers. Okay? It's no. Right, Donna. It's 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 all about that, Donna. It's about seeing who will fall for their shit. Right. So anyway, this goes on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. It says, uh, even, even, it, this is just. Uh, I know. E- it's even, what September? We've been doing this for seven, eight months now, Grim. Right. I know. You know. Fuck. So it says, well, probably longer, because I, I was listening to one of our January right. shows 
We were, yeah. we were already January, talking about January, we started talking about coronavirus. Yep. Yep. That's true. So it yep. says, even the public health experts, whom these followers all promoted as great prophets just months ago, cannot tame their fervor. That's a problem because a return to normalcy will require subduing radical factions that agitate for oppression. Restrict it, restrictions such as mask mandates are like oxygen to followers of the radical fundamentalist Covidianism. That's the, that's the religion. Covidianism. Uh, and, uh, or Coronaism, I guess. Or what, what is, uh. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, or, who or what, brought up that shit? What is Hal Call it? a religion now? Come on! Uh, what, what, what is, what is Hal uh. Call it? Uh, Corona Colloquialisms. Whatever. Uh, the, uh, the abiding belief that only lockdown, social distancing, and masks can, can deliver us from the deadly pandemic. The longer mask mandates stay in place and experts continue promoting mask use, my mask protects you. Your mask protects me. Yeah, it works the same way with vaccines. Uh, oh, my vaccines protects me. But you have to have one or else I'm not protected. Uh, <laughs> the stronger and more widespread the extremism will grow and the less influence experts will have over their behavior. The evidence is abundant, but consider three cases of radical Covidianism, Covidianism and how they trace back to the abandonment of scientific standards necessary to maintain public health and a functioning society. Ignore the dangers of masking while exercising. That's, that's number one. First, Michigan Governor uh, Gretchen Whitmer signed an executive order last week requiring all non-professional Gretchen, sports... Governor Hitler! Whitler! Whitler! Uh, all requiring Hitler. all non-professional sports players to wear masks. Athletes, except for swimmers, must wear masks while training for practicing... Oh my fucking... The lady's nuts! You or, can't or, fucking train while you're wearing a mask and you're breathing intuitive? What the fuck? You trying to kill these fucking kids? Or, you fucking cunt! Or, or, Sorry! Okay. Cunt! So if they fucking can, cunt! So if they cannot uh, maintain... Uh, consistently maintain six feet of distance... There are no age specifications in the requirements. Oh, fucking shit. Oh, my God. I can't. Oh, you have to go on, Grim. Seriously, this is ridiculous. This is fucking <laughs> outrageous. I'll just give you the other bullet points. Mask the babies. They want you to mask your babies. Um, and also, wear a oh mask. Oh, my God. Wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. This is a good one. Go ahead. Wear a mask when you're alone. Um, what? <laughs> okay. So I saw this horrifying video on Twitter like two days or three days ago. I think Rami posted it or linked it. And it was showing a newborn maternity ward. And they had pla those plastic shields, but they were like newborn size, over their faces. Yeah, I saw those too. Yeah, yeah. I saw I'm that. like, this is child abuse, dude. Yeah. They're making those babies breathe in their exhaust. Air. Right. Uh, and it wasn't like the face mask. It was just like the shield, right? Right. I know, either I saw... way, that's still blocking. That plastic shield is blocking well, there. It's, it's just stupid. It doesn't do anything. Oh, my God. I mean, it doesn't I do anything like, good. What is say. this world? What? Go ahead. It doesn't do anything good. I'm like, if I was a parent, I saw my kid in there, I would be taking my kid out of that fucking place. Yeah. I mean, get this fucking shit off my child. This is plastic. You're putting plastic on my human child. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, read that article. Seriously, it's... anybody that gets pregnant, don't go to a regular doctor. No. Okay? Go to a trusted relative that's had kids. Or a midwife. Just, just find a nurse. Find, find go a... to someone you know that's a nurse or a retired nurse. Find a midwife somewhere. Stop having your... Yeah. Stop. No, but midwife, dude, is still legal, dude. So? They're regulated. So? Midwife. So what I'm saying is they got to register the birds and shit. Well, go to okay? a homeopathic midwife. Right. Or some, someone that's on their own. Right. Someone that's a, a ex-nurse, a retired nurse. Okay, so I don't give a fuck. I'm putting this information out here. Okay? Okay. Stop going to a hospital... And a Western doctor 
when you're pregnant. You just can buy prenatal vitamins off the shelf. Just, you don't just, have to get a prescription for prenatal vitamins, okay? Just just dump Western medicine altogether. Dump Western medicine. Have your baby naturally. Women did it for thousands of years. Look, look and and if you if you yes. you know whatever ailment or whatever, look up Ayurvedic medicine, medicine because yes. that, that's thousands and thousands of years old and it works. Um, I can attest. Start thinking outside the box, people. I can We've been talking about this for years, but this year, can you see what is happening here? I, I can personally attest to the power of Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, anyway, right. so read that article. It's posted on frontpagemag.com. And, uh, so what were you talking about? How, Graham? Oh, well, at least, uh, well, I, I've used various things, but every day... I drink out of like my cup. Turmeric and baking soda. Well, yeah, those of course. But every day I drink out of out of my Ayurvedic vessel. Uh, it's a it's a copper copper vessel. Uh, I think it holds okay. twenty twenty four ounces, and I I drink two of those a day with the baking soda in it. You don't need the baking soda. Uh, that's my own addition uh, that right. I use for keeping that that mm -hmm. that will prevent you from ever getting any kind of cancer. Um, right. Or it should. Uh, <laughs> depending on how you do it, right? But yeah, uh, if you're using it properly, uh, so um, yeah. So okay, I'm no, getting it, the Ayurvedic vessel. I'm ordering it tomorrow. Um, I will and, do and it. Just look, just look up, my cart. <laughs> just just look up, look up Ayurvedic medicine, medicine, because any ailment you have outside of right. you know broken bones, I've not been sick in years, Cowboy Tech. I don't even no, remember. No, it's preventative. It's preventative maintenance, dude. I can't even remember. You don't the wait till you I get sick. sick. I mean, you're better off preparing for, or you know, um, fortifying yourself, you know, beforehand, because you don't want to wait. Once you wait, if you wait till you get sick, then it might be too late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, Cowboy Tech. There's another factor: is I avoid people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he also avoids people because a lot. Pe people people are ew. <laughs> but I can say for a fact, I know that's not going to work for Cowboy Tech. No, I don't. I know. Well, that most, would not work for, for me for or Cowboy Tech. Ninety nine, ninety nine percent of the people it won't work for. <laughs> right? We but, need socialization. We yeah. like people. Like yeah. we like some people. It's not just because really you like people doesn't mean you like all people. Do right? Right? You right. like your people. <laughs> you like your people, you know, the people you can relate to, the people you get along with, you know what I mean? Yep. That, it, it's not all people. Like, so for anyway. Like all people, Grim. May, you maybe like some people. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe those uh, mask fanatics need to listen to this song. Okay. Yeah. Let's and, hear it. And, Enjoy. Uh, our, thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's a half moon. It's crazy. For, so, for, for the, well, and it's what, a crazy time. So, you know. What, what, did, I, what, what did they call them? Co, co, COVID. Covidians? Covidians, yes. <laughs> yeah, Covidians. Yeah. Covidians. Yeah, listen Covidians. to that. Get, get rid of that religion. It's, 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 can't, it's not a religion. Well, it's, it's, it's not. According to the article, it is. They're it's trying to make it one. It's, All right. It's not. Here we no. go. All right, I guess we get it. Oh, here it is. A little outro there for the... Uh, for their label, their new label. Uh, that's uh, Blue Oyster Cult, brand new, brand new. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult is releasing a brand new album. Uh, when is it? I think it says here. A uh, couple of weeks. Uh, oh, October 9th. Uh, brand new album by Blue Oyster Cult called The Symbol Remains. Um, so That was it, awesome, Grim. Yeah, and it's been 20 years since their last album, Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Wow. Uh, so. That sounds like a fucking... Young people. Yeah, so yeah. Like, they, they, that is so, like, they, they, fresh. They too. brought they brought back their old sound. Uh, and, and it's so fresh, and, though. And, and, it's perfect. Good anyway, for anyway, them. Anyway, that track, that track was called That Was Me. It's Blue Oyster oh. Cult there, uh, brand new. It just came out uh, nice. uh, two weeks ago. That, that video came out. Awesome. Three, 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 three weeks ago. Uh, Excellent. So, awesome. Before that, The Pretty Reckless Doing My Medicine. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, some great stuff there. I, I love that song. Uh, whether you like the video or not, or what's happened to Taylor, uh, Momsen, and, you know, she's still good. Uh, she's, she's, she's a great Dude, artist. Dude, I can't comment. I, I just don't want to go there tonight. I know, I know, I know. I just, I feel really bad. I, I don't know. I know. And we kicked it off there with a Hansel request. 
I am losing my religion. So excellent uh, song. I love the lyrics of that song. I've liked that song ever since it came out. I'm a, I, I am an REM fan. I'm going to say that. I'm not afraid to say that. I love REM. Okay, good. Michael Stipe was a very good, talented writer and singer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There is. I, I, no, was. <laughs> anyway, yeah. oh, um. Place here. The chapter room, because I have to verify that. You got a witness? Or I should. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> anyway, um. Oh, fuck. Let me go find something here, quick. So. All right, we're lucky here, Graham, because we you developed RLM back in like oh eight yeah. or something, two thousand and eight. Yeah. And so basically, what you were, is, well, I know you are, but you're a freaking genius. You know? Uh, no. Um, uh, you are. Come on, don't be, don't be shy. I'm. And, I, and, I, 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 I am. Humble. And... I am as Joe you, Walsh. You have a lot of skills when it comes to computers and all this stuff. I, you know, I, I like maybe like see, so kind of psychic a little bit, you know. I am, as Joe Walsh would say, <laughs> an ordinary, average guy. Average guy. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's what you would describe yourself as. Yeah. But you actually are pretty ge- genius because. You developed RLM in 2008, and now it's 2020. Yeah. And people like Clyde Lewis and people, other people that are similar to Clyde Lewis that have their own radio shit, and they're relying on network radio stations to broadcast their program. Guess what? They're not doing it anymore unless yeah. they pay a large amount of money. I know. Okay. Well, they're, they're in it for they're in it for money. See, that's the deal. Right. If I and was so, there. Facebook and all these independent radio stations and all the regular radio stations and all the media out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, a, from my understanding, it's kind of like a co- conglomeration of them. Basically, they want to control what is put on their site. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you don't. If they don't agree with what you say, yeah, see, they're gonna ban you. They're gonna do this and that. They're yeah. gonna fucking plague you like it's happened to hell a couple times now. Mm-hmm. And the censorship—if you guys can't see that and the problem with that—then I don't know what to say. But look up censorship and look up the history of censorship and look up like okay, look up the the lead up to World War Two. I dare you to research this, okay? Sure. Before, like five or six years before World War II happened, or before like the process of what happened, Germany was fun loving. People were going out to restaurants. There was concerts. There was dancing. There was parties. There was parades. There was weddings. There was, you know. But since the Germans hated the Jews so much, they started this campaign of hatred against Jews, okay? Right. Because, oh my God, Jews aren't Christian. You know, the yeah. Germans are Christian, right? Jews weren't. I uh, Protestant. So they yeah. used religion as the, the divide, dividing factor, okay? Yeah. So, like, they're Jew- they practice a different religion than us. Even though they're successful business people, they're just like you and I, they're German people, they have a different religion. Right. That means that they are evil. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Of course. Or they go against the Christian principles, so they're bad. Well, I think right? it was I I think it was more of the uh, uh the the money grubbing. They they they, exactly. they 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 said, "Oh, they're a bunch of money grubbers." You know, they Right. And look at the, you know, the watchmaker. Oh yeah, he's a grubbing, he's a money grubber. Well, he's you know, Jewish, but he's making money. We can't have Jewish people making any money in this town. Co- well, because you know they own the banks and they own the jewelry stores and right. Yeah. And they're like, okay, yeah. So they 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 were uh, evil. We're done. <laughs> Even though everything was going great, right? Yeah. Like people were happy. It was like the Roaring Twenties and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they just, Germany 
decided they were going to side with Hitler or whatever. I don't know how it all went down exactly, Graham, but they're like, yeah, you're right. We need to get the Jews huh? out of this fucking country, you know. <laughs> They 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 came to it they came to it through financial ruin which all that also that financial ruin was also done via uh, false flag events so right and we're gonna steal the fucking when we get them out in, in custody uh-huh. we're gonna go in their shops and in their homes and we're gonna steal everything that's valuable oh, all yeah. the artwork all the jewelry everything sure you know because we're gonna we, we, they need to go and we're gonna take all their shit too yeah you yeah, know yeah. It was brutal because for the, when it first started, before the war actually broke out, mm-hmm. they started with, like, the register. If you were a Jew, you had to register, right? Right. And then if you were a Jew, you had to, like, say what you did for a living. And then you had, well, when you registered, you had to say what you did for a living. So they knew exactly where all the Jewish businesses were. That's right, Donna, uh, Donna Pr- Prescott Bush. He was over exactly. there. Exactly. Prescott Bush was the banker for the and, Jews in and, World War II. Yeah. And IBM was the one cataloging everybody. Exactly. <laughs> IBM. Because computers existed way before we ever knew about them, okay? If you think, like, you were around the dawn of the computer age, you weren't, okay? No. Because it happened, like, in the 1940s. Right. You know, the beginning, the dawn of the age. Yeah, well, the you know, there's, there are more right. of... Uh, data storage and calculating machines than what the, you right. know, than what we have but uh, but they were they were rec- recording stuff they were taking right. taking tally like they made the Jews register because they wanted to know exactly where their businesses were okay, and you got where 30, they lived. You, got, you got 30 seconds go ahead 30 seconds oh yeah. no but <laughs> you guys if you don't see the correlation i don't know what to tell you but the government loves to keep people divided on many in many ways. Sex sex, race, religion, all that money, status, all of it. Yeah. They want us divided because if we are united, we will kick their ass because they're outnumbered. Right. I mean, how many state representatives does your state have? Do the math, people. Not very many. Compare the <laughs> amount of people in government <laughs> to the total population of this country. And you will see that the government, quote unquote, is out fucking numbered. Right. And they keep us divided by race and religion and sex and money and whatever else they can think of. Right. Because they know if we're united as a country, as a people of this country, and not in the government, that they are out fucking numbered, dude. Okay, well we got we got to do this last okay. thing here. All right, I, you know it's it, it's not even a theory of mine. I know. It's true. She does. That's why they've kept us divided for this lot. Right. By religion and politics and abortion and you name it. <laughs> they keep us divided on a level because they don't want us united. Oh, hell no. We can't have them talking to each other. What do you think the mask you're all about? Right, right. We don't want people talking. It's an election year. Okay, we gotta go. We can't have like, people saying, what about this and what about that to other people that might sway their vote. You know? Yeah. yeah. So keep everybody muzzled. Fuck you. I went to Quick Trip, no mask. I went to the other store, no fucking mask. I get on my car, I'm like, fuck the mask. I'm going in there. If they want to die me business, I'll go somewhere else to buy my shit. Okay, Moose, let's go. Fuck you. I don't want to breathe properly. <laughs> I'm going to breathe properly. I was born to breathe properly. I was not born with a goddamn mask on my goddamn face. Come That's on. right. All right. Well, we're fuck going. you. And this fuck. Oh, oh, I'm so sick of it. Grim, it's been seven months or eight months. Or I nine know, months I know, shit. Moose. I know, Moose. But we gotta you go. You get we to got, a point where we, you're like, "Fuck <laughs> you, I'm done." You know what I mean? And I am done with this fucking mask nonsense. You know how many masks I have? I have three like cloth masks in my purse. I have never washed them ever. Okay. And I'm still wearing. And that's how stupid it is. I know, I know. Okay, it's let's so, uh, let, let's do this thing here. Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a half moon. It, you know, I, know, I, I get weird on a half moon. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna be a little bit over, but that's all right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Do this. Do the walk of life. Oh yeah, he's done now. 
That's Nick Cave in the bad seats there covering Black Betty. A uh, little call and response action going on, you know. Uh, very, very interesting. Tribal. Uh, before that, we uh, had, uh, for, for the Moose Girl, Dire Straits, Walk of Life. Uh, good stuff. Anyway, yeah, folks, uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I've had a good time doing the show tonight. It, it zoomed on by really quick it here. It did. That was quick. Yeah, it was quick. Uh, so, uh, like I said, it was a good time. Uh, we talked about very few stories, but uh, we, we got a lot of other stuff covered in the interim. You so, know, it's been eight months of this freaking insanity. I know. Whatever. You know, nine months, ten months, a year. <laughs> I mean, you get to a point where you're like, okay, enough is enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so everyone have a great weekend. Yep, uh, don't forget to uh, tune in tomorrow to the Dork Table at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, Flash and yep. Grammy, and uh, I'll be on Sunday morning with the Blues at noon Eastern, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Check the schedule on reallybrittymedia.com yeah. for the rest of the shows. Thank you all for tuning in. Absolutely. And um, stay away from people. <laughs> <laughs> if that's how you feel. Yeah. All right, peace. <laughs> Peace.